families are getting help signing up for Cersei Public Schools. And a local museum gets a big donation. Today is October 17th, 2023. Your HE16 Live at 5 News starts right now. From the students of Harding University, this is HU16 News, live at 5. Hello and welcome to your HU16's Live at 5 News. I'm Ariana Davis. And I'm Haley Stevens. Thank you for joining us. We start off tonight's news with a campaign from the state police that targets drivers who continue to text while driving. Arkansas drivers who are caught texting while driving can expect a traffic ticket of up to $250 for their first driving offense and up to $500 for any subsequent offenses. The Arkansas State Police is continuing to work with agencies across the state for a new You Text, You Drive, You Pay campaign, which began yesterday and will run through October 23rd. Arkansas state law prohibits the use of a handheld cell phone for texting, typing, emailing, and accessing the internet while driving. And this can be considered a primary offense. A driver can be stopped for violating the law without any other violations. The Arkansas State Police recommended that during this time, it should serve as a reminder to parents to discuss the dangers of driving while distracted, and parents should set a good example with their own driving habits. Lawmakers and community leaders gathered in Little Rock today for day two of the inaugural Human Trafficking Summit at the State House Convention Center. State Attorney, Attorney General Tim Griffin says that he doesn't want people to overlook the issue of human trafficking, but they have to know that what they are looking for, and nearly 1,500 people attended the summit to learn how to identify signs of human trafficking. Combating human trafficking in Arkansas was one of the platforms Governor Sanders ran on, and she says there are changes underway to address it, address it, such as Operation Awakening. The operation by the state police and victim services providers last month that recovered 10 adult victims and two children in a single day sting. The Arkansas Department of Public Safety and the Department of Human Services will form an Arkansas Human Trafficking Council that will be a permanent part of the law enforcement in the natural state. Investigators have a mystery on their hands in southwestern Arkansas as a dead body was found in a train car full of corn. Hempstead County deputies respond to a call at the Tyson feed mill at 4.20 a.m. on October 16th and found a decomposed body stuck at the bottom of a grain car filled with corn. The train car was one of a 100-car train that delivered beans to Mexico and was empty until it reached Missouri on October 14th. There was filled with corn and traveled to the Tyson feed mill in Hope, Arkansas, where the body was discovered two days later as the car was unloaded. The body, which was sent to the Arkansas State Crime Lab, is, the adult, is an adult male, and the cause of death and further identification have not been determined. But the case is currently under investigation by the Hempstead County Sheriff's Office. Searcy Public Schools are offering a chance for families who need assistance to apply for Medicaid. Medicaid experts will be available from 5 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. tonight in the cafeteria at McRae Elementary School. Along with direct aid in English and Spanish, laptops and Wi-Fi will be provided for quick online access so families with children who need Medicaid can consult ex with experts and complete Medicaid applications while they're at the event. This is especially relevant because 427,000 Medicaid recipients in the state have been kicked off the roll in the past six months as COVID-era rules have expired. The race for the GOP presidential nomination is underway and the nominees have announced their quarter funding numbers. Former Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson is falling behind the pack according to his third quarter campaign funding. The Hutchinson presidential campaign on Sunday filed its quarterly report where it raised $640,000. This amount is significantly lower than Republican frontrunners former President Donald Trump and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis who raised $45.5 million and $37.5 million respectively. Your favorite childhood toy might be one of the next finalists for the National Toy Hall of Fame, and you have the chance for the, to vote for it. Four inductees will be chosen by a special board, board, but one will be chosen by the public. That one will be from a list of five multi-time finalists who have failed to make it in the cut previous years. They include Fisher Price Corn Popper, My Little Pony, Pez, Pogo Stick, and Transformers. The final inductees will be revealed on Friday, November 10th. Let me tell you, today would have been a great day to get outside and play with those toys. 
Let's send it over to HG16's Ava Hagedorn to see if we can expect more of the same beautiful weather in the coming days. Hey Ava! Thanks Haley and Ariana. It's been an absolutely beautiful day so far today and we have finally hit those beautiful fall days so many of us have been anticipating. What is the rest of this week looking like though? I'll give you an update on that and more after the break. The thing that drives me every day as a dad is him. His real name is Darion and we call him uh, Day Day for short. Every day he's hungry for something, whether it's affection, attention, knowledge. And there's this huge responsibility in making sure that when he's no longer under my wing, that he's a good person. I think the advice I would give is you don't need to know all the answers. The craziest thing was believing that your dad knew everything. So as a dad, you felt like you had to know everything. You had to get everything right. It's okay to make mistakes. Just do it from the right place. As long as it's coming from love, then, you know, it kind of starts to work itself out. I want him to be able to sit back one day and go, we worked together, we did a good job. I'll say my kid's pretty dope. To Sofia and Gabriel, Miss Flores, my little flowers. Even though these old knees can't follow on your adventure to the forest today, these flowers represent my love. So you can take me with you wherever you go near or far. These stitches and threads join us together. Me, your mother, and both of you. And wherever you see a flower, a bird, a beautiful tree, know that my love is with you as you bring our colorful stories to the world. Make the forest part of your story at a park near you. Find one at discovertheforest.org. I'm Ava Hagedorn with your HU16 weather. Let's get right into it. All right, first up here, we're looking like it feels like 70 degrees out outside. Nice and clear, sunny temperatures. 71 degrees out and I know that for me personally as I was walking over to the studio today it was pretty crisp nice fall day nice blue skies with not a lot of clouds it's a good day to be outside as you can see here looking at that wind it's enough to get a little bit of a cool breeze but nothing too crazy and also that lower humidity is helping with those fall temperatures as well across Arkansas we are looking like we are in the hotter part of the state right now um, both Texarkana and Monticello are at 71 and then Fayetteville and Jonesboro are at 70, but right now we are in the hottest part, looking at 75 right here. So we are in a little bit of that pocket of hotter air. Um, for today's highs, we're also looking at 71 in Searcy right there, um, but pretty much all looking around the same temperatures all around the state. Uh, one of the colder ones being 68 up in Fayetteville and then 67 down in Camden. But there's not going to be a whole lot of difference there. We're still looking at around the same temperatures, those upper 60s and those lower 70s. For tonight's lows, that's where we're going to start to get a little bit more variety. As you can see here, we're looking at 45 in Searcy with a little bit warmer in Little Rock, looking at that 48. But once again, we're looking a little bit cooler down in Camden with that 43. So it's going to be a little bit cooler above us and it's going to be a little bit cooler below us as well. For tomorrow's highs, we are looking at a little bit warmer than we have been experiencing today. Uh, that 76 in Searcy right there. But like I just said, it's going to be a little bit colder um, right up here and down here. As you can see, it's 74 in Fayetteville. And then it's going to be that 72 in Camden as well. For today's surface map, uh, you can see there's not a lot going on in the middle towards Arkansas here. We do have that high pressure system down in Texas, but that's not going to be affecting us too much, but that will be changing as you can see on tomorrow's surface map. We're going to have that cold front be passing through. We're also going to be experiencing some of that precipitation up here, so we need to just have that to keep in mind. Um, that also high pressure system down in Texas is going to be gone, so we can um, act accordingly to that as well. 
For our five day forecast here, it's going to be a little bit all over the place, but as you can see there on Thursday, it's going to be experiencing that 30% chance of showers. Um, so make sure you all prepare for that, but nothing too crazy. Both Wednesday and Friday looking pretty moderate with that high of 76. And then on Saturday and Sunday, Saturday is going to be our hottest day this week with that high of 79. But like I said, it's still going to be a beautiful fall weekend, a great day for some Harding football. That's going to be it for me today. Uh, let's send it back to Haley and Ariana at the news desk. Arkansas Governor has been in the news a lot recently. Coming up next, we'll tell you why. We've got that and lots more ahead on Live at 5, so stay with us. I'm a public defender. I am a public defender. I'm proud to be a public defender. 80% of Americans accused of a crime will get appointed a public defender. Everybody from a speeding ticket to capital murder. For every dollar we spend on public defenders, we spend $3 on prosecutors. Public defenders have to do pretty much everything on their own. Social workers, counselors. Investigating is another piece of it. The average public defender holds 300 cases annually. You never feel like there's enough time. Public defenders have health issues all the time. A lot of people give up and say, I can't do this work anymore. Gideon's Promise trains, mentors, and supports public defenders. There are a lot of people who say that they would not still be public defenders, but for Gideon's Promise. It's fueled me to continue on in this fight. Gideon's Promise has changed the face of public defense. People see us as troublemakers. <laughs> Good trouble only. We don't make it easy. It should not be easy to take away someone's liberty. When a crisis hits close to home and across the globe, nonprofits are on the front lines ready to serve. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. The demand for charitable services has skyrocketed, and nonprofits are rising to meet the needs healing, nurturing, rescuing, honoring, protecting. Caring, inspiring. The work of philanthropic organizations of all sizes across all missions has never been more important. And it's donors and volunteers like you who make all this possible. Thank you. Together, we change the world. The Nonprofit Alliance. Thanks for joining us for this second half of HG16 Live at 5. I'm Ariana Davis. And I'm Haley Stevens. A White County Victims Advocate will be on the Harding campus this Thursday to continue the topic of dating violence discussed earlier this month during chapel. On October 2nd, Bobby Boozer, who is the Executive Director of the White County Domestic Violence Prevention Program, spoke to chapel goers that dating violence includes physical, mental, or emotional abuse with one in four women and one in nine men experiencing this type of violence. This time, Boozer will discuss the topic in more depth, including the signs of dating violence, how it starts, where to find help, and how to support someone affected by dating violence. Boozer will speak on Thursday in the Anthony and Wright Administration Auditorium from 7 to 8.30 p.m. There will be opportunity for an, a Q&A after the presentation. The Office of Arkansas Attorney General Tim Griffin is donating $500,000 in the next two years to the National Cold War Center in Blytheville. The National Cold War Center is located on the former Blytheville Air Force Base, which opened in 1942 as a training facility for World War II pilots and later became a strategic air command throughout the Cold War. The base in Mississippi County was one of the Soviet Union's top five military targets in the height of the Cold War and is now being transformed into the world's premier destination for Cold War history, according to Mary Shipley, the chair of the board of directors for the center. The National Cold War Center was originally supposed to open this year, but was delayed due to the COVID-19 pandemic and is now projected to open in 2024. It has been a full it has been an eventful first 10 months for Sarah Huckabee Sanders in the Arkansas Governor's Office. HU16's Naomi Pinzen has a recap on why the leader of the natural state is staying in the headlines. Hey Naomi. Hi Haley. Well, some of you who keep up with the news, whether it be our HU16 Live at 5 or elsewhere, may notice Governor Sanders has been in the news quite a bit these days. 
Here's an update as what to the Arkansas governor is up to. Governor Sanders said in a news conference on Tuesday that Arkansas is going to require the China National Chemical Company to divest its land holdings for the Northrop King Seed Company in Craigade County. In doing so, Arkansas is now the first U.S. state to force a Chinese company to divest its land holdings to the state government. Sanders continued to explain the decision with worries of the technology they were dealing with, making it back to China, thus weakening the American defenses against an attack of against agriculture. On another note, Governor Sanders is still facing scrutiny for her judgment in purchasing a $19,000 lectern. The purchase was not made public before a journalist discovered it through an FOI request. Then a whistleblower accused the governor's office of, for covering it up. Since that time, the Arkansas legislature has convened an audit, encouraged by Republican lawmakers, to make sure the circumstances surrounding the purchase are all above board. At the time of this broadcast, the results of that audit are still outstanding. This became all the more controversial as Governor Sanders convened a special session of the Arkansas legislature, which passed more restrictions in the state's sunshine laws. This made many legislature and government watchdogs even more suspicious. According to NPR News, these decisions are encouraging more and more questions about her adequacy for office. And it looks like all the stories about the Arkansas governor is really taking a toll on how people view her. A recent poll from Emerson College reveals the public eye's 31% disapproval rating and 29% of the participants neutral, leaving the below average 40% approval rating. And as always, we will be watching all of these stories and more here at HU16. But for now, I'm Naomi Pinson. Back to Haley and Ariana at our very much not $19,000 desk. It's now time for a look at Harding Sports. Let's send it over to HU16's Max Sweet with an in-depth look at the Bisons. Two Harding football players received impressive awards. The soccer team plays tomorrow and October baseball is only getting better. I'll be right back with all that and more after the break. Federal investigators blamed human error for a deadly natural gas explosion. We all remember where we were that morning. We could actually see the smoke from our farm here, which is close to 20 miles away. It started to pull right off the bat. Both tractors just kind of started to spin out, and those are big tractors. So I knew something wasn't right. Out of nowhere, I just heard a big boom. The tile plow ruptured into the pipeline. Once the gas got through the intakes of the tractor, this is when it ignited. As soon as I heard that boom, I started running as fast as I could. The ground literally started erupting from my feet. They were highly respected and they were good at what they did. And it was one of those accidents that when it was done, made people step back and pause. If an accident can happen to them, it can happen to anyone. Watch the rest of the story at 3secondslater.org. And remember, Farm Safe starts by contacting 811. On February 19, 2007, my Humvee was hit by a roadside bomb that was estimated to be about 700 pounds of explosives buried in the road. It's a miracle any of us survived, but I did lose three soldiers that day. I feel like I should have died on the battlefield, but I'm here. I feel like God's given me an opportunity to grow as an individual and have another lease on life. When you look at these scars, a lot of people sometimes just get wrapped up on the physical thing. But what about all those other dynamics, mental issues, PTSD, TBI? The Coalition of Pseudo-America's Heroes is the leading nonprofit that is helping veterans across this nation. Their focus is on the entire family because they're his or her support system. They've already saved countless lives, and they can save countless more lives. We need your help. Visit saluteheroes.org to learn more. Welcome back to your HU16 Sports. I'm Max Thweet. Let's get started. After the Harding football team won their biggest game of the season on Saturday, two Bisons were named the GAC Players of the Week. The first was Nathaniel Wallace, a senior defensive lineman. Wallace came up big in this matchup between two nationally ranked teams. He ended the day with five tackles and forced a fumble in the third quarter that set up the Bisons just outside the Tigers' 10-yard line. The Bisons would go on to score and take the lead 20-10 as they never looked back and scored 28 unanswered points and won 41-10. to 
Wallace shared the Co-Defensive Co Player of the Week award with Scooter Baker from Oklahoma Baptist. The second Bison named GAC Player of the Week was senior punter Ryan Fox. Fox punted three times in the Bison's home victory and averaged 45 yards a kick with a long of 57 in the second quarter. All three punts landed inside the 20-yard line and the Tigers did not re record any return yards. Brayden Jay, a sophomore running back for the Bisons, was also nominated for the offensive award. Congratulations to the football team and these players on their awards. The women's soccer team will play tomorrow against Southwestern Oklahoma State. The Lady Bisons currently sit at 3-5-5 on the season, and this away game would be a huge GAC win. The two teams played under a month ago, and the Bulldogs bested the Bisons 1-0. This game will be play played in Weatherford, Oklahoma tomorrow at 3 p.m. The Harding football team is not the only undefeated football team in the area. The Harding Academy football team is currently 7-0 on the season. They have beaten every team so far, and the closest game has been a 15-point win against Valley View. They will play at Riverview this Friday at 7. And the MLB playoffs is in full swing and is down to just four teams. The Texas Rangers are taking on in-state rivals the Houston Astros in the ALCS, and the Arizona Diamondbacks are playing the Philadelphia Phillies in the NLCS. The Rangers hold a commanding 2-0 series lead against the Astros, and Game 3 will be tomorrow at 7 p.m. The Phillies are up on the Diamondbacks 1-0, and Game 2 is tonight at 7 p.m. If I had to pick an early World Series winner, I'm taking the Texas Rangers, who are undefeated in postseason play. The Rangers have left their mark on the last two teams they have played. The Rays and Orioles both got sent home early by the Rangers before even winning a game. The Rangers are my pick this year, but when it comes to baseball in October, anything can happen. I'll be sure to keep you updated on the MLB playoffs, but for now, I'm Max Thweet for HU16 Live at 5 and the Harding Sports Network. For score stats and highlights, be sure to check out hardingsports.com. Back to Haley and Ariana at the desk. Thanks, Max. Well, if you've had enough of the political division in the country, then we have just the candidate for you. We'll tell you all about him after the break. The thing that drives me every day as a dad is him. His real name is Darion, and we call him uh, Day Day for short. Every day he's hungry for something whether it's affection, attention, knowledge. And there's this huge responsibility in making sure that when he's no longer under my wing, that he's a good person. I think the advice I would give is you don't need to know all the answers. The craziest thing was believing that your dad knew everything. So as a dad, you felt like you had to know everything. You had to get everything right. It's okay to make mistakes. Just do it from the right place. As long as it's coming from love, then, you know, it kind of starts to work itself out. I want him to be able to sit back one day and go, we worked together, we did a good job. I'll say my kid's pretty dope. I tell my son, I love you every single day. Now, my dad has never said that to me. Not because he doesn't love me, but because culturally, it wasn't comfortable for him. Now that he's a grandfather, he says, I love you to my son every time he sees him. My advice to all the fathers out there, forget the cultural restrictions. They grow up way too fast for you to waste even a single precious moment. If all the drama and infighting in Washington, D.C. has got you down, our next story might just give you renewed hope that our elected leaders sit, stay, and roll for a good belly rub. One Alaskan town might soon be able to bribe their politicians with a doggy treat. Let's meet the campaign manager and the canine candidate, who is a very good boy. Dave Allgood has a story of Miko, the Alaskan Malamute mayoral hopeful. Richard Ziggy Zeigler is a fixture here in downtown Anchorage where he lives and creates. Now this is a little bit of what I do back here. All these uh, murals that you see back in here. But it's his latest endeavor. Oh, I love my candidate because I know he loves me. Well, that's important in any relationship. So campaign manager for a mayor wannabe? Politics has become uh, kind of a doggy dog kind of thing. And Maybe not a bad idea. No, maybe it's a good idea. <laughs> when it goes up and down the street, everybody wants to take pictures of him. Yeah, you can get a picture of him. 
So you're uh, behind the scenes. I'm behind the scenes. Yeah, well, well, like good. the campaign manager. Good. Is it uh, so? Is your candidate likable? Oh, he's lovable. This Aww. mayor candidate sounds like a good boy. He's very hairy, and has a great disposition. It's amazing. No, uh, like I said, he loves to hug. It's amazing. And he loves to give kisses. We need more hugs. Meet Miko, the Malamute mixed canine candidate for mayor of Anchorage. Oh man, I was like, man, he's a little cutie. I like him. He's super fluffy. <laughs> This made me want to run up and just pick him up. Aww. Beautiful dog. Yep. I've never seen nothing like it before, so. So I figured, well, why not run a dog for, uh, for mayor and, and for office that uh, might change things, how people feel. Just look at this pooch politician with dreamy blue eyes that say, can't we all just get along? Who can, who can say no to a fluffy dog? I mean, that kind of, like, both sides got to come together and pet him. Yeah. <laughs> Are you running on your stunning good looks? Are you running on your stunning good looks? Is that it? There you go. Okay. My Thank dog's you. running for mayor. I'm his campaign manager. Miko for mayor! And Roger here got a kick out of Miko and thinks today's politicians are full of... Politicians do uh, what the dogs usually do in your backyard. <laughs> Poop emoji. Yeah, I, I would say yes. <laughs> So in a town where dogs and the Iditarod rule, Miko might just be the right write-in candidate for right now. He's got my vote. <laughs> and I'm supposed to be impartial, but he's so huggable. That he's got my vote now. As perfect as Miko seems, even he's got his price. You can't influence him, I hate to say that. A treat will always get uh, him to respond to you. Wait, wait, okay. Even the ones with paws have flaws. Well, these two will always be political allies. And that's... Yes, a good boy. Yes, you are. The All Good News. Well, he sure does have a very positive campaign. And if Mika was running for mayor of Cersei, he sure would have my vote. He would have mine, too. For a final look at the weather, let's send it over to Ava Hagedorn with our five-day forecast. Thanks. Let's take one last look at our five-day forecast. Okay, looking up right here, it's a little bit all over the board. Wednesday, we're looking at the high of 76, and then Thursday, we have that chance of showers. Um, the high is pretty much what we've been experiencing so far. And then Saturday, we're going to have the high of 79, the hottest that we will be experiencing this week. So make sure you don't put away your shorts and t-shirt too soon in time for that Harding football. And then Sunday, we're back to the uh, mostly fall temperatures that we are used to. And that's going to be it for the five-day forecast. Let's send it back to Haley and Ariana. That's our show. Thank you for joining us. Join us next time right here on H 16 Live at 5 for Community Matters. Have a great evening, and we'll see you tomorrow. them enough to crawl into a play place to get them to come down, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. I'm Chris Jackamick. I served in the United States Air Force and I've deployed three times.
So in 2017, I was serving as an Air Force First Sergeant. Our motto in that role is my job is people, everyone is my business. But unfortunately in that year, I would lose my own brother, Lance Corporal Adam Jackamick, to suicide. The majority of veteran suicides are from guns. I store my weapons securely, not only for myself, but for my family. My service never stops.